In this video, we're going to create a solid body that has a small lattice section in the middle of it using Fusion 360 forms. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to carry on with our forms mastery, creating a lattice structure using form pipes. But this time we're going to complete the process to create a design that you can 3D print or manufacture in some way. So to get started, you can go to the description of the video and you can download the lattice container design, which simply creates an extrude that has a fillet on the bottom and it's shelled with a two millimeter wall thickness. So what we're going to do from here is we are going to create a couple references. We're going to create our mesh body and then we're going to turn that into a lattice structure. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to my surface tools. I'm gonna to create an offset of this outside face, but make sure that we turn off chain selection. And we're gonna offset that inward a distance of one millimeter. So that'll be a minus one. This is gonna be exactly in the middle of the solid wall. The next thing that we wanna do is we wanna split this body up. So we wanna take that lattice and we wanna create a thin section. We can do this a few different ways. Uh, in this case, I can take extend and I can grab the edge and I can try to minimize it. And you'll notice that that doesn't really work very well in this, uh, in this specific example. So the best thing that we can do is we can create a sketch and we can trim it. So we already know where the bottom and the top is, but I'm going to use P to project those references. I'm going to use L to create a line going from their midpoints. I'm going to hit escape and then I want to turn this into construction using X on the keyboard or from the sketch palette. And then I'm going to create a center point rectangle right in the middle. And I simply want to create a rectangle that extends past this. In this case, I'm going to go 125 millimeters and I'm going to make this 35 millimeters tall and we'll finish the sketch. Then I'm going to use trim. This will be my trim tool and I want to remove the top and the bottom. When we use a trim, we have to get rid of that sketch. We have to hide it. And now what we have is a solid body and we have the surface body that we can see inside of it. Now, remember the trick with this is we actually have to turn off capture design history for the mesh section of this to work. So I'm gonna go to my lattice container at the top of the browser and do not capture design history. We're gonna continue. Next, we're gonna tessellate this. We'll select it. I don't really care what this initial mesh looks like, but we can always preview it and we can adjust these values. For example, surface deviation, we can use normal deviation and in this case, what we're really looking to do is, is we want something that has enough resolution here. So I'm just gonna simply say, okay, and then I'm gonna remesh this. We're gonna select the entire mesh body. So if you happen to select a face, you can box select everything or you can select the mesh body from here. Again, we wanna turn on preview and we can modify this to be uniform. We can adjust the density until we're happy with the results. So you can see here that it's not selecting through. That generally is an option here where we, we need to make sure that we are selecting the backside. We can also turn on our mesh palette, which um, helps us select everything in the design. So if we wanna make sure that we have everything selected, that mesh palette sometimes can help. You can see it's still not selecting the back. So let's pre-select the entire mesh body just to make sure that we have it. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna do a, um, a pretty minimal lattice and I'm gonna say, okay. Next, again, we're gonna convert this back. So we wanna convert the mesh to a faceted B-Rep, a faceted body. And now we have this sort of mesh element. You can see here that if we look at this and we try to identify, uh, you know, potentially a good side and a bad side, there are better, uh, you know, there are better sides. So we could take this because it's a solid body we could take this and um, using our surface tools or our solid tools, depending on, you know, if you have a, a thick and solid body, we can then use tools like trim and we can trim away the right hand side of this and then we can mirror it. Uh, I'm not going to do that for this example, but if you want to get really precise, you can play around with those mesh settings and you can work on a, you know, on a case where it, it actually works and it, it looks really uniform. This is going to be fine for what we're doing. Next, we wanna to go to our form tools and we're gonna create a form using the pipe option. Now I'm gonna go into select, selection priority and turn on edge priority. And I'm gonna reset this global diameter. I'm gonna make it two millimeters. That was our wall thickness. And then I'm gonna select everything. 
I'm going to go to Smooth Display, and I just want to take a look at everything. In my segments, I'm going to reduce the number of segments I have. That's going to give me a larger intersection here. And everything looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with those results, so I'm just going to say OK. Then I want to hide my mesh body. Now, this is the part where we potentially run into problems, depending on the number of faceted uh, edges or faces that you had. Sometimes this step doesn't work, where we try to convert the form body into a solid body. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to convert this. So we're going to use the Convert option, T-Spline to B-Rep. We're going to say OK. Now again, sometimes this doesn't work. If this doesn't work, we still have the T-spline body here. There's another trick that we can do. So I'm gonna to go to solids and I'm gonna create just a, a cylinder or something that's larger than the object that I'm working on. So I'm just gonna create a cylinder that's larger. I'm gonna pull this up so it goes all the way through. It's going to be a new body. Before I do anything else, I'm gonna right click on this. I'm gonna to go to opacity control and just set it to 40% so we can see that that sort of B-Rep mesh body is inside of there. So the T-spine, the purple body in the folder, and then we have our solid body here. We're not gonna be working on that solid body. We wanna make sure that we show the T-spine because this is what you would do if the conversion did not work. We're gonna to go to Create, and we're gonna use an option called Boundary Fill. Now, Boundary Fill is an interesting tool, and honestly, it's a little tricky. It's hard to use. So we, this is a really simple example, so it does help, but we're going to start by selecting our tools, and we're going to select the body first, and then we're going to select the solid that we created, and note that their center points are at different locations. This is going to be important for us to identify. The next thing that we need to do is we need to select the cells. These are going to be the cells that we want to keep. Uh, it's, again, it's kind of hard. You're going to have to just hover over and figure out which one looks right. In this case, we could create this solid boundary body with the center of mass way off to the side, and it would be a little bit easier. This can be a new body, but we can also use it for things like joining bodies together, cutting them, and so on. This is a really handy tool if you have a bunch of surfaces and planes and you want to create a volume from them. This is the tool that you would want to use. So now we say OK, and if we hide the, the mesh body, we hide the T-spline body, and we hide this big body that we created as, as sort of a volume. Now you can see that we have uh, this converted version of it. And again, this is the tip that you would use if things were broken. The next thing that we want to do is bring back our original cylinder. All right, so the entire idea behind this is for us to create something that we can sort of mesh these two things together. And the first thing I want to do is use press pull. I'm going to select the inside faces and I want to sort of, um, actually let's go ahead and cancel that. Select this inside face and notice that it's defaulting to minus 37. Let's set it to zero. And then we want to find a sort of a median, uh, in this case, minus one millimeter might be okay. Notice that it's sort of filling everything in. So that's not the result that we want. So let's go ahead and hold down the control key and let's try to select the inside of this. And, and again, you can see what's actually happening is it's creating this, this huge volume and that's not really what we want. What we really want is we want to create a situation where this body is exactly in the middle of uh, the rest of the body. So let's cancel that and let's go ahead and right click and capture our design history. So now we're back capturing our design history. Let's try to use press pull again and let's select this inside face and begin pulling it in. So you can see this tool works a little bit better here. We can do this as automatic or a new offset if we want, so we can increase or decrease it. And I really just wanna go um, about to the point where I almost don't see that anymore, and then I'm gonna say okay. The next thing that I wanna do is I wanna look at this sketch that I used to cut things out, right? So I'm gonna use that as an extrude, and I want to cut all the way through in both directions, but I only want to cut out this body, body seven. Uh, I'm sorry, body one. Body seven is the one we want to keep. So we're going to leave that body behind. And you can see now we've sort of got this lattice structure in between here. Now, a good thing that I would suggest is, is to kind of move things around a little bit. I'm going to use move copy, and I'm just going to move this down just a little bit, maybe half a millimeter, so minus 0.5. And we're going to say OK. And then I'm going to repeat that 
on the bottom, and I'm going to move this up half a millimeter just so that I have a little bit more overlap there. And once I'm happy with those, I'm going to combine all three together. So we'll just simply select all three. And now we have one single solid body that has all of that information in it. I'm going to select the rest of everything that's here, right click and remove it. And what we're left with is this sort of container. It could be a pencil jar or for keys or whatever the case might be. But now we've got the solid base, we've got this lattice structure in here, and it connects to this top rim. So if we do, let's say, inspect and section analysis, and we just pick one of these planes, you can see here that what we've done is we've sort of combined all these things together. You can see that the solid bodies overlap. And this gives us a, a pretty neat feature. Now, obviously, we could spend a little bit more time, do a higher density faceted mesh, and get a lot more of these pipes in here. We could use a smaller size. Instead of two millimeters, we could do one. The higher resolution mesh, the better it's going to match that original body that we created. With this low res, then obviously we're not truly cylindrical anymore. We've got straight lines that are pretty far spread out. But it does give you a pretty cool you know, sort of object. We go into render. Um, we can change the appearance of it. I'm going to use A on the keyboard. I'm just going to go to a plastic material. Just pick something that has a little bit of color to it. Um, we could do textured or transparent or smooth. And uh, in this case, just pick something that has a, a color, something that looks interesting, maybe a red. And um, then we can do sort of an in-canvas render and see what this looks like. So it's, it's pretty neat. It's a pretty cool technique. We can see the shadows coming through. Um, this is, you know, something that you could potentially 3D print one of those times where you're just not really sure what you want to do. But it's a, it's a cool technique, and this is hopefully more of an application of the last video, something that we can potentially use this for. Uh, if you are planning on using this technique for something, I'd, I'd love to hear what you plan on doing with it. There's a lot more that we could do. We just have to get really creative with those initial surfaces, and we could completely mesh and convert a solid body and turn it into you know this pipe structure but I really found that it works better with a thin surface and that way you're only working with a single set of edges but we could have done a small panel here we could have wrapped it around sort of twisted at an angle there's all kinds of different things that we could have done with this but again hopefully this is a little bit more insight on an application that you could use for this tool. And again, if you do anything with it, please let me know. And as always, if you have questions, just leave them in the comments or shoot me an email at support at caducation.com. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.